Couch, Dr. Jeff Wilber uh, joining us, celebrity veterinarian and Tasca alongside. Tasca. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. A rescue, a mix, we love that, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you never know what happens on live TV right now. <laughs> Tasca right. very well behaved for us. And you're here for good reason. We're going into the summer season, dealing with the heat with our pets. We want to keep our dogs healthy and above all, hydrated. What are, the, what are the signs of hydration? Absolutely. First of all, it's easy to tell whether your pet's hydrated. Number one, if you just kind of, if you do this at home, just kind of rub the gums. The gums should be nice and slimy. Okay. And if they're not, and they're tacky, oftentimes they're too dry. Nothing you can do is you tent up the skin here. You see when I pick it up, it goes right down. You can't even see where I lifted it. If a pet is dehydrated, you're going to see it stay up. It's going to tent and going to go down very slowly or not at all. Those are signs of dehydration. And the key is, is that here we are, beautiful weather. We've been couching it all winter, putting on the extra pounds. Even Tasca, a few. <laughs> and uh, and uh, now it's time. Tasca on live television. <laughs> yeah, I know. And now it's time to get out and start exercising. We want to do it smart. I like to tell people start with a good vet check, make sure everything's in order, make sure everything's okay. And then when you're going out, you want to plan for disasters. So in other words, never exercise in the middle of the day. All right? Sun's hot, it gets very warm. And they love us so much that they will try to keep up with us even though they can't. So I recommend early in the morning or late in the evening. And just one uh, hint late in the evening, the asphalt stays very hot. So be, you either stay off of the asphalt or you can use these little like paw protectors, these little booties oh, to protect idea. their feet is a good idea. Um, if you're going to leave a dog in the backyard during the day, make sure that they have water access to water all day and shade. That's very important. And of course, never leave a dog alone in a parked car. Definitely. Um, what about the yeah. coat, the fur? Is there anything, any indication? Well, you know, when you're here? brushing, when you're brushing, you tell two things. Number one, nice, smooth, shiny. And number two is going to be whether they've packed on a few. If you can't feel a rib, and you can feel the ribs on Tasca, chances are they need to lose a few. And here's some statistics. 50% of dogs and cats, well, mostly 50% of dogs, about 35 to 40% of cats in this country are overweight. Most of them, interestingly, I'm not pointing, it, pointing any fingers, belong to owners who are going to use a few. So when you think about the idea of getting out and exercising, it's a great idea. One another thing we, we're learning about maintaining hydration is feeding. You know, we've been so, 70% of dogs, especially big dogs, eat only dry food. And we're finding out that there's major advantage to feeding canned food as well for the wet food. Number one, less calories. So when you want to put a dog on a diet, instead of using less food necessarily, you can just mix in some wet food, which has a, a lot less calories calories per gram than dry food. So getting a good mixture of both is the Absolutely. key. Absolutely. Um, also, it's, the dry is good for their teeth. And, I, and nothing fancy. You can just you know, buy anything. Just, you, know, you go into a supermarket, the aisle is very long. You know, just take things off the shelf on items, the pedigree, whiskey, things that you just see yeah. on the shelf is fine. And the idea is to mix it, gradually mix them in. And it could be any combination. It could be at the same time. You know, as I say this, if you gave a dog an option, they would opt for wet food. It's like giving a kid ice milk or ice Ice cream. What do you think they're going to want? They're going to want the ice cream. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Let's talk. You know, you mentioned the teeth, teeth when it comes to the diet. Let's talk about right. uh, so some of the indicators. It's also here. important that uh, oh, they say roughly 70% of dogs and cats over the age of three already have periodontal disease, mm. you build up tartar. So it's a good idea to get in the habit of looking at the teeth. Now, most of the teeth, I don't know if you can see up close, perfect. You can see. These are the teeth that are going to accumulate some tartar and plaque. Yeah. And you want to get in the habit of brushing teeth, seeing your veterinarian regularly, but it's very easy. And you know what? If you make it fun, dogs love it. You take some of your finger, you rub it in their mouth, and you go, oh, Tasker, you're so good. You're such a good girl. All right? And then every day you can uh, put like a little finger brush on. And as they get better, and always follow with a treat, do it before a meal, do it before a walk. So they have something to look forward to. What's going to happen is they're going to start making the association that this means I'm getting a treat. And you're saying once a day is Good if you do once a day, I'm gonna love you. But yeah. chances are, I tell you, do it, do it, you know, every day. And if you do two or three times a week, you're still in great shape. Okay. And, great, uh, great tips for Tasca, and uh, we're gonna wrap on that note because there's so much to cover up. But of great, course. Great information you passed along. And there's more information. This can go to petmixedfeeding.ca. <laughs> petmixedfeeding.ca has all of this summertime tips, health tips. It's great. I guess uh, Tasca responds she to the rap cue. Tasca's like.